All right, well, um, I think I am going to at least show you um, the basics of a couple of the alternate weapons here. So there is this once it's all together. All right, actually, quite cool. Um, I'm going to have to do something to essentially recreate it of like axe on the bottom. Um, the elbow joint to allow it to be magnetizable and here's another one it's essentially a big gatlin gun right once that's all glued together like the cool thing the barrel even spins so hopefully you can see that um and then this one the big giant scythe that once it's all together uh and i am waiting on the pair of posable gauntlet hands that will allow the hand to actually wrap around this. This will be cut off because it does not actually need to be attached to the arm. That way we'll have gauntlets for it. Um, and then we'll see about actually swapping out, um, hopefully with magnets even, the scythe head for big giant like battle hammer um, that would be more appropriate for the Iron Warriors. So then, as we start working on some of the resin parts, um, the two foot bases are out. One of the toes is out, still needs a little bit more cleanup. Um, resin's not the best kind of material to work with. It can be a little hazardous as far as breathing goes. So we do want to be careful with some of that. So for some of these bigger sprue chunks, like the little ones, we're just going to cut with the nippers. Um, and I should be using my kind of garbagey, less precise Citadel ones for that. But then just a little saw here for taking that off. Works pretty nicely. And you want to be careful with a lot of this because if you use the nipper too close to the model um we can get some kind of breakage so now we just want to kind of start taking this off in little chunks that i hope i can avoid throwing them all over and then that piece should really be kind of hidden uh, inside the connection that's going to go in here so if, let's see, if the end of that's not perfect, it really shouldn't matter. Um, I'm going to have to go get some really good quality five-minute uh, two-part epoxy, though, to make sure that those toe joints, because this base, I believe, is going to end up being suspended off the ground once that's connected together. So that is going to need some very serious support to take care of that. But then a lot of this is going to clean up really nice. A lot of stuff's going to need sanding. Um, but really, overall, this is going to be a very nice piece. So, just try to keep everything away from where I'm cutting. And then I'm just going to actually get all the little sprues off. That way I can just grab my little handsaw and get all of these and out of here at the same time. Um, I'm probably going to talk about it more, but all these kind of extra add-on parts and everything else be so nice to actually have just a little 3D printer. There's so much of this could be customized, added on to um, really inexpensively. The downside of the 3D printer is the smell of the resin um, and the need for high quality ventilation, which at this point I don't have. So 
So, one nice thing about having my little video camera suspended up above the table is all of this shaky, crazy stuff is not going to end up on camera. So, let's just get these toes cut out. And then, right. yeah! Uh, just a sec. So, we'll go see what that's all about. And then we'll come back to the video momentarily. It's going to warp those blades. All right, so to finish up, I guess I'm just going to get rid of the bigger blocks here with the less precise snipper. And then I'll go through and do a bunch of sanding. Um, before I can attach anything together, I'm going to have to run to the store and pick up some five minute epoxy. And I've got really good super glue, but super glue is kind of brittle. Um, and I definitely don't want the toe attachments to the feet here to end up being brittle. So, once these guys are cleaned up, I'll make a run, and everything's happy. Guys, are pretty clean. All right, let me grab nice files. Oh, that should be pretty good. I might need some new files. Some of those are getting pretty clogged. And I do need to be careful here with how much dust I generate. Um, this resin dust is not super healthy. Not that breathing any dust is. But I'm going to try to avoid stirring this up too much. And you never know, at some point, you might actually get smart. Wear a mask. At least minimize the amount of dust I'm breathing. So probably not super smart to just blow all of it around the basement. Right, that should be pretty nice. One nice thing about the resin cast parts from Forge World and Citadel. Um, Games Workshop, I suppose, is most of the part has very little cleanup. They're really nice. So, and I'm pretty sure, like that spot right there, you'll never be able to see once this is all actually together. So, some of this cleanup probably isn't necessary. But I'm mildly anal retentive when it comes to stuff like that. So keep all my little scrap bits separated here. Well, there's some stuff depending on where we are here that I might need to clean up a little bit with an exacto. Um, but for the most part, this stuff uh, clipped really close to the surface, so just a little bit of filing should be 
fine. Now, as I go, I may also find that there's just, well, I don't think it'll ever be necessary, but there's a little seam edge right down here along the bottom edge of the foot. So, not sure if that's something that I'll need to go and do any kind of fill. Um, so I think that should be fine. I don't think any of that will be noticeable after this behemoth is all built. Pretty sure that something that's that close to the ground is not something that's going to catch your eye. But we'll see. There are levels of perfection that are useful, <laughs> and there's levels that are. end up being a lot of video. Hopefully this uh, Vimeo recorder is going to do a nice job. Never tried recording all this stuff before. Got my laptop and the web camera set up. Hopefully will be good, useful, worthwhile video. Kind of a cool idea. Never really thought about shooting video of any of this stuff before. Good. Right. These metal files actually look really nice. So, depending, hopefully, the metal files don't get too clogged up. I'll keep working through the whole build here. These are definitely not like fine finish work. For this, actually, I think it's going to work out just fine. I don't, don't feel like I'm going to have to sand it with super fine sandpapers. But we'll see. And any of these super minor imperfections where the screws were attached you can most likely hide on the back. Okay, I mean, you'll find them if you really want to. But we'll try to make sure it's not front and center anyway. It's really hard while I'm doing this not to blow the dust out of the way. I'm going to try to not do that because it's supposedly really unhealthy. Now, let's see, I need another exacto here. Let's get a little bit of 
from Kanda Joint. That looks nice. Okay. I think that looks good. This one is pretty close. Again, this is completely inside the joint, so as long as the toe piece gets in there, and we've got a good glue surface, shouldn't have to worry too much about that interior. Just got to make sure it's open enough to allow the toe in. And you know, theoretically at least, these feet going to end up having some dirt, mud on them kind of thing. So, just be able to hide any additional imperfections. I do like it when everything starts out like it just came off the factory line. Huh? And then, dirting it up and weathering it. I just feel better. Like, knowing that it actually did start out perfect, I added weathering to a perfect base, rather than starting with something that's not actually like, you know, original. So we'll try to get perfect, really close up there. Okay, I think that should be all the cleanup on these pieces. And then all these will end up fitting right in to our slots here. So again, obviously, there we go. This is where we definitely want some really good high quality glue to make sure because there's gap underneath the foot. So we definitely want to make sure that that's a super strong joint and doesn't kind of fall apart with the weight of the model on top of it. So we're going to call it for this one. Um, and we'll be back with more after I do a little bit of shopping.